YouTube, I'm Chris and I'm with Rockabilly Road Trip, the comic book. And we are in the Rockabilly Road Trip garage where we built the car you've seen in the sizzle reel and where we shot part of the sizzle reel. You might recognize these toolboxes behind me. Anyway, I'm here today to tell you my top five picks of who I think the godfathers of Rockabilly are. Number one, Sam Phillips. Sam Phillips owned Memphis Recording Studio back in like 1952, and then he changed it to Sun Records in 1953. He recorded the first rock and roll song, Rocket 88, with uh, Ike Turner. He also recorded people like Elvis, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, all the rock and billy guys. He recorded them right there in Memphis, Tennessee, 706 Union Avenue in an old body shop where they used to fix cars. Anyway, moving on to number two, Elvis Presley. Everybody knows Elvis Presley is the king of rock. Elvis Presley is, is probably one of the greatest icons when it comes to rock music and music in general because he crossed over into so many different genres. You know, they couldn't figure out if he was country or if he was rock or if he was pop or if he was R&B, whatever, it didn't matter. Moving on, number three, my number three pick, it's Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins came out with the song Blue Suede Shoes. Now, Blue Suede Shoes was sung by Elvis, but it was written and first recorded by Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins' song Blue Suede Shoes went from Billboard's magazine's number one top hit, and it crossed over from country, pop, to R&B, all the way across the board. And the song, we all, everybody knows that song. It was a good song. Blue Suede Shoes was the cornerstone for Rockabilly. That's when the term Rockabilly came about, was when Carl Perkins did the song Blue Suede Shoes. Okay, moving on to number four. Number four, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, the man in black, okay? Johnny Cash was like your original outlaw back then. You know, he sung about the things people wasn't supposed to sing about, and he did it anyway, and he did not care whether you liked it, or if anybody else liked it for that matter. It didn't matter. That's just who he was. And it was good music. And I thank him for it. Anyway, moving on to number five, Jerry Lee Lewis. Not only was his piano on fire, he was on fire. This dude tore the stage up. Now, could you imagine growing up back in a time where you seen Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, and Jerry Lee Lewis all on the same stage? I mean, these guys were phenomenal. But this is where Rockabilly came from. These are the guys that took the music and blended it together, morphed music into what it is now. It's going to be Sam Phillips, Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, and Jerry Lee Lewis. That's my top five picks. Now, I have an honor to mention here. Now, check this out. In 1954, something came out that was really cool, and it was called the Transistor Radio. Okay, for those of you who don't realize it, you only had AM radio prior to, say, 1953. The transistor was around. It's been around since 1925, but it didn't go into cars until 1953, 1954, 1955. Now, back then, there were 6 million new cars on the road, and guess what they did with all those old cars? They gave them to their teenage kids, who were back then... Emotionally confused teenagers, just like they are now, so there's really no difference. But back then, they gave all the junk cars to the kids. The kids go out, they rip the fronts of them off, they put, they take the fenders off the back, they throw these big giant flathead V8s in them, and they start racing them up and down the road. Well, as time went on, I mean, in 1955, 1956, you know, that's whenever the 55 Bel Airs and all the, the other cool cars started coming out. So the, really the only thing that was were, were these jalopies, rat rides, uh, you know, these conversions. Anyway, going on from there, being that Elvis Presley came into a time when, when music now was mobile, Every town had a boulevard that it cruised up and down, and guess what? Nine times out of ten, 
Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, all these guys are playing. They're playing in their mom and dad's cars. They're playing in their own little beat up cars. They were in all the shops and the uh, drive-ins and everywhere. Music hit new heights back then, okay? This is where the crossover came in and rockabilly is so much more than say country or pop or R&B. It's a mixture and it's what kids have been doing. So I give credit where credit's due. That's my top five picks. If you think I missed somebody or if you got a different top five, Comment down below and let us know who you think it is. But I want you to subscribe to our channel. Keep up with us because we're going to put some really cool things on here. And I think you're going to like it. I really do. You know, what else you got to do anyway? If you're watching this video, you have nothing else to do. So anyway, keep up with us. Go to our Indiegogo page. We almost hit our goal. We'd like you to, to buy our comic book. Check it out. Check out the, the Nikki in the Pipe and Patches on their road trip across country. And they get into some really cool things and mess up a lot of stuff, run over a lot of people, a lot of fighting and, and stuff. And it is what it is. And you got to check it out. I love it. Anyway, I'm Chris, Rockabilly Road Trip. See you next time.